my name is Tina. I'm from White Noise Paranormal. I'm Joe. I'm one of the co-founders of White Noise Paranormal. I'm John Fontanis uh, with White Noise Paranormal. I uh, play the part of an investigator. Hi, my name is Bert Coates. Don't need no preacher man to tell me right from wrong Don't need no real estate to prove where I belong Don't need no passenger to tell me where to go Don't need no travel guide to go and steal the show Just me in the open road, got it going on My lights tell me where I'm going to The dust tells me where I've been the motel is my living room. Wellington. The bar is my bed. Here we are. Camera in your face. Ah! I can assure you there is no elk. None. No elk. Bears, maybe. Almost to, the, to a structure. But we will be fine. We have an almighty trusty hacky sack. Oh, and, for Adam. Right? And we have a, some sort of a machete. Maybe that's there it is. I just saw it. Dude, that's all trees and fences. The runway track was used to slow and stop trains with defective or weak brakes. Trains coming from the tunnel and moving through town would automatically be routed to the runway track unless the train engineer signaled with a whistle that all was okay. The station agent would then route the train to the main line, sending it down the mountain. If there was no signal, the train was sent up the runway track to slow itself down before crashing at the end. One night my mom woke up and she heard the doorbell ring at the apartment that we lived at and uh, opened the door and there was nobody there. And um, everybody was asleep and so it, she heard it again and went back, opened the door um, and this time my, my grandpa uh, told her, uh, everything's gonna be okay, sis. My grandfather would call her sis when she was real little, that was her nickname. And so she thought it was rather a real, a real thing to her because it was, he was right there in front of her. So since then, since she's told me that, I've had many other instances, myself, my family, my friends. So it seems like I'm supposed to be maybe investigating doing this with, with white noise. So that's why I'm here. Are you playing with yourself? Oh, come on. What is going on there, Mr. Los Angeles character? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it was a night just like this one. <laughs> I was standing here exactly the way I am now. Something piqued my interest. <laughs> What I'm was standing, that, Joe? I'm standing next to you. Yeah, and then just, just now I just heard someone there. like, just when Joe was talking, I just heard someone like a... <clears throat> but it's all behind me. It's all behind me, too. It's so weird. Yeah, it's, it's all in the past. Man, you just cannot get it right. <laughs> yeah, dude, don't stand anywhere on this side. Right? Like, but for some reason my feet are like, do it! Just go over there! <laughs> I know. Your eyes are like, no! Ow! <laughs> right? <laughs> Your lungs are like, yeah, yes. Reminds me of five minutes ago. <laughs>
What the f <laughs> <laughs> Super crazy, man. <laughs> you know, Levi's, they start to warm up and then they get really, really hot. Yeah. And then they like get hotter and hotter and fan in your knees. You could probably put some pine cones or something in there. <laughs> oh no. Go ahead and kiss the girl. You dream about going up there. <laughs> but that is a big mistake. <laughs> Too many Disney movies I have seen. Our ratings just dropped. <laughs> yeah, clearly I now understand if you guys don't want me to be a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help with an enabler like that. <laughs> oh! Oh! Crikey, I got a freaking pine cone! <laughs> that's not a pine cone, that's a tree nub. Careful, it could sting you and you could die. That's a knot. Cool, put it where the fire is not. Oh, that's much better. I know, right? Yeah. Way to, way to smother the fire. <laughs> it's much better over here than over yeah. there. I am a winner. There are many coals right here. <laughs> Not so many over there. You yep. wise. I am wise. In the way of daughter. putting wood in fire. <laughs> How often do you put wood in your fire? Roughly three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> Only three. <laughs> Only three. Didn't your mother tell you not to play in fire? Dude, I'm stoked. Boo! Uh -huh. <laughs> fire, fire, burning higher. Whew. Okay, I will have this on video when he is in flames. Oh, flaming pine cone. You are now known as flaming pine cone. God, it's so hot. Oh, you... It is fire. It's fire. <laughs> supposed to feel cool. <laughs> what is this red amber thing that produces heat? I will grab it with my hand. And then I will rub it in my beard. Yeah. Oh. That's much better. You know, this ghost hunting 101, never leave the fire. Serious. Then it's that's cold, when it turns into dark, and wind. scary out there. <laughs> if there are any ghosts that are here, can you please come closer to the heat? Right? <laughs> we don't want to move. Someone help me out. <laughs> this will be a ghost hunting around the fire. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to us? Come closer to the flame. <laughs> don't be afraid of the flame. <laughs> I'm on fire. I'm laughing. It's those Levi's. My wood's on fire. It's the Levi's, man. <laughs> Protect the wood. All right, stop blowing me. I need heat. So this is the fundamental basics for shake and bake. First, you must have dry wood <laughs> that's been whittled three times a week. Three times a week, even. Now, it wasn't like three times a day, was it? Negative. Okay. That is definitely a negative on that. That is definitely a weekly schedule. You would be considered a taxi cab driver if it was three times a day. Right? That's too much. Maybe even a courier. <laughs> uh, you know, I started uh, looking for the paranormal around 2004. The only reason why is I had this uh, fear of death. So I thought I would go out and meet death before death met me. So ever since 2004, we've been investigating the paranormal. And uh, so I, I got hooked up with uh, Joe and uh, Tina and John and the rest of the gang over at White Noise about a year ago. And uh, we've been uh, hanging out at the farm, Super Woolly State Farm. And, is that right? Super Woolly Farmhouse looking for dead people. Now we're on our way up to Wellington. Here we are again, day two. Not quite there yet, but...
Hey, this is a pretty exciting place. Okay, ready? Yep. Alright, here, maybe get a little closer to you so I can get my body up against the bar. Alright, ready? Yep. One, two, three. There's all kinds of these little divots up here. Yeah, I was up there once before. This is some you would see in like Uncharted. <laughs> nice. All right, you got it. That's exactly what you have to do. You have to use that crevice as your leverage. You guys give me some exercise today, huh? Yeah. Man. Yeah. We're gonna know this road firsthand. Yeah, the people that have been down there don't know it. Every once in a while I get an email, hey, what's that road that you guys take? Sorry. <laughs> down here one night just to sit yeah. um, with the Jeep off and I had the hard top on so I didn't worry about cookers or anything like that. Sure. I, just and I sat and listened and, uh, and the forest at night. Oh, a couple of Oh, God. A couple for sure. It was uh, pretty creepy. I bet. Oh, yeah. That would be to be too. Wellington. Here we are. Because that adrenaline, man. That water damage is in here. Up ahead. Now what is that? Is that where the actual old train lay? Or laid? The length of the snow shed was the length of the trains. Because there were two trains. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Man, I feel like my hood like inhibits my hearing. Say what? So I feel like my hood closes off my hearing. I feel the same way when I put my fingers in my ears. <laughs> it does it does tend to be it like does. that, yeah. I can't hear anything. It pisses me off. <laughs> it's such a pet peeve. It's like, God, fingers, get the f out of my ears. We got an EVP here one time. We had this big table and set up a bunch of equipment. And it was oddball stuff, you know. A bunch of people brought certain things that they had. We were going through it and we ended up getting this uh, EVP that said, uh, Psychopaths, get the hell out. We've had a couple. We've had a couple different uh, things happen while we're standing here. Ryan, one of the uh, investigators that used to be on our team, and I were standing in that corner. We heard somebody say hello, and it was a woman. And uh, I said, Ryan, did you hear that? I think somebody's coming down the snow shed. So we, we went out there, shined our flashlight, and there wasn't anybody there. Weird. Yeah. I think that... They're just as curious as we are. They're doing like the same things we are. They're, you know, they're like, who are these people? They want to know our stories just as much as we would like to know theirs. Well, think of it this way: yeah. if, you know, we were ghosts, and, uh, you know, the the paranormal investigator was like George Jetson. Yeah. You know, he would be an interesting guy. Oh, totally. Well, maybe they have a story to tell. Exactly. You know, or they want to get uh, something across. Yeah. Maybe there was a part of history that was wrong. Yeah. And, they have uh, something they need to say. Totally. I that, agree. That or they just are totally entertained with our babbling. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Because I, I babble the best. That's why we're up here at Wellington all the time, um, is to document uh, everything. The dates, the time, uh, what had happened on that day. And I think over time you'll see a pattern of things that are happening, but at the same time, um, they're different. So. You know, we have 
the research to back up what we find here. Sure. If you investigate one place uh, one time and say, oh, it's a residual, and then run away, you know, you're, you're you really labeling know? something. Right. You're, exactly. That's an uneducated guess is sure. what that is. So I don't like the label haunted, um, don't like the label uh, things you know, residual. And There's, I don't like to put names to things like that either. No, absolutely not. You know and I mean? think haunted is probably one of the worst terms to use oh, yeah. as far as labeling something with paranormal activity because it has a very dark uh, description to it. Yeah. You know, and, um, but like I said, it, that's just my, my opinion. Sure, sure. A lot of people, I think, come into this, um, you know, profession, if you will, whatever have you, that with the mindset of like, I'm gonna find something. Did you guys just hear that? I swear to God, there. I heard like a hiss or something over there. Did you hear something? No, but I just saw something. Did you? Yeah. Maybe. Did you? What did you see? Uh, something went from pillar to pillar. It yeah, I've like been seeing little... that out of the corner of my eye. You guys want to mosey? You guys want us to get fire and camp? What do you guys want to do? Well, let's see if we can spark some Whoa. spark some activity. Yeah, freaking rock gets me. It got me last time. That's one of my most favorite rocks. Try and take that thing home. Okay, friends of Wellington. Okay, we're gonna go set up camp and eat. Bye. We'll be back maybe. We started NWPIA in 2004. We spent most of the summers up here um, investigating all the paranormal activity. It's kind of the, well for me it's the most haunted spot in Washington, that and Seattle Underground. Then I saw my uh, very first ghost, what, in 2008? Seven or eight? Seattle Underground. Then a bunch of stuff here, Wellington. It's been a, it's a hobby that's gone wild, definitely. I bet it gets crazy by yourself, even if you have you know, a car and a gun, I'd still be like, I'd still be kind of freaking out. I think it's more boring than freaky. Yeah. Because if something did happen, all you have is your word. Yeah. I mean, unless you had a recorder with you, but even still, yeah. 